going right. When I was 17, Phoebe admitted that she had a crush on me. These feelings were complicated, she said, by the fact that she thought her best friend Abby might have a crush on me too. When Phoebe asked me if I liked her back, I told her I'd give her an answer right after I found out whether or not a relationship with Abby was on the table. It was the most and least successful day of my romantic life. On the one hand, two separate girls were into me. On the other hand, I said something in my panic and confusion that was immoral and inconsiderate, to say the least. Not to mention that, practically speaking, it was not a winning strategy. My social nadir sprung to mind last week when I was subjected, via Instagram, to a Drew Barrymore quote. Over a stock image of a sunset, Barrymore mused, I never regret anything, because every little detail of your life is what made you into who you are in the end. Perhaps it's the pain associated with recalling my youthful, not so youthful, indiscretions, but I always cringe when I hear celebrities try out this hackneyed answer to the any regrets question. And hackneyed this answer is, being issued like so much legal boilerplate from the mouths of public figures from Motorhead frontman Lemmy Kilmister to Scientology founder L. Ron Hubbard. Even infamous statesman Henry Kissinger agrees. You are you, and that is the beginning and the end. No apologies, no regrets. One might think that, on reflection, Kissinger might have some apologies or regrets about uh, orchestrating the indiscriminate carpet bombing of Cambodia, for example, or supporting the genocidal Pakistani dictatorship of the 1970s, but perhaps he was simply living his truth. If it's not already clear, I call bullshit on anyone who would claim infallibility, or worse, claim that all of their actions were justified based on the fact that they made them into the person they are today. Now, I'm not advocating for any ceaseless wallowing in self-disgust, but I can't help but question people that claim that, given the chance, they wouldn't change a single action they've ever taken. I find myself wanting to ask Drew Barrymore if she ever stubbed her toe on lounge furniture, if she ever accidentally stepped on a pet's tail or taken the wrong train. I want to ask her if she's ever said something in anger that hurt someone she loved. And I want to ask if she's certain that, given her time again, she wouldn't at least try a different path. I suppose when people recite this platitude, we're supposed to think, wow, what a wise and well-rounded person. Fuck. Fuck. They have that much acceptance of... Of? Where's off? Oh, shit. Of the past. Wow, what a wise and well-rounded person to have that much acceptance of the past. I can't help but think, though, that as a society we're capable of having more complex conversations about our flaws than oh, everything turned out alright in the end, so I wouldn't change a thing. Perhaps this banality, especially when it comes to celebrities, is the inevitable result of a deeply personal question being asked in a short, shallow interview. Perhaps these answers are the product of the sort of public attention that's reluctant to forgive mistakes. Now, perhaps more than ever, the court of public opinion has no statute of limitations. But when we're afraid to acknowledge our mistakes, we rob ourselves and others of the ability to learn from them. Shortly after the regrettable Phoebe and Abby incident, one of my best friends withdrew from everyone he knew. He holed himself up in his bedroom and refused to eat. He slept almost all the time and when forced out of the house, he barely spoke. I realise now that he was going through a severe depression, but at the time I was either too ignorant or too self-absorbed to notice. He pulled himself out eventually, but... He shouldn't have had to. I regret my actions then, and I don't labour under the delusion that my life would have turned out any differently if I'd asked my friend if he was okay, or if I'd told Phoebe the truth, which was that, more than anything, what I liked most about her was that she liked me. See, implicit in admissions of regret 
uh, honest accountings of our actions and and knowledge of our mistakes, which we would like to try not to repeat. This kind of sober reflection, I'd argue, is crucial if we want to build our character as people. I just won't go without regret, despite how peaceful a regretless life might be. I think if we are a little more introspective about our missteps and a little more open and vulnerable about sharing them with others, then we'll come out of this thing better people.